Okay, what we're going to do today is we are going to extract the grill shell off of this 32 Ford donor car in order to trial fit on the new High Boy Roadster. And to do that, we have put uh, towels, if you will, and uh, fender covers on so that when we undo these two screws here, and two of us lift this off, we won't damage the paint on the grill shell. Part of the goal in this process of building the 32 High Boy has been to preserve the body as it is because it was selected because we like the color, like the interior, and the pieces we're taking off, we want to preserve as best as possible and not uh, chip paint or have to touch up or repaint. So anyway, that's where we are. We've protected this uh, uh, process by the covers. There are two screws on a hole down here that we'll take out in just a minute. And once they're out, we'll be able to carefully slide the hood off and we'll store it temporarily in another room. So that's where we are. everyone, Nick here. I'm going to speed this up a little bit and provide narration to walk you through exactly what we're doing. So we have our new radiator. We're drilling mounting locations so that we can do a test fit, get everything nice and level in relationship to the engine. And as we're doing this, we start to test fit the grill shell. And we find that the radiator, uh, the top of the radiator, there's two aluminum fins that are sticking out and they're interfering with the internal radius of the top of the grill shell and is making it poke out a little bit. So Jim has found some material that we can safely remove and get a tighter fit of the grill shell to the aluminum radiator. So once he marks that off, gets the cutoff wheel and removes that excess material, we're actually able to create a better fit between the grill shell and the radiator. So that's the first challenge we came across uh, so everything looks great. We went ahead and reclamped everything back on. The second challenge was that the whole grill shell and radiator itself were just simply too high. Now it's a new radiator. We do not want to start cutting off aluminum mounting locations at the bottom. So instead, Jim decides that we're going to go ahead and cut a portion of the frame out on both sides and that's gonna allow us to get the room that we need to lower the radiator about five eighths of an inch. And he's gonna talk about that uh, at the end of this video. So he's marking out the location of where the material is gonna be removed. He's gonna grab a cutoff wheel and go ahead and start removing that material. Now there's a lot of material here. And so in no way does this uh, mess up the integrity of the frame. So there's plenty of material to be removed and still be safe. And then later you're actually going to see that Jim cuts off a piece of angle iron and then we clamp it in place temporarily. Uh, that'll actually get welded in so that it'll provide a flat surface for the radiator to be 
permanently mounted. So right now he's checking the relationship where the air cleaner is to the top of the radiator. So he'll talk about that in a second. I go ahead and pull out the radiator, um, put it back in here and hold it just to make sure that everything's fitting the way it needs to. We go ahead and drill some pilot holes to get our location set. Drill the final mounting hole. Go ahead and put some bolts in, get a nice test fit. And we're gonna go ahead and bring back in the grill shell to see if we got the fitment that we were looking for. And then Jim is gonna take it from here and explain what we did. Well, we have removed the grill shell from the 32 donor car. And the purpose was to fit a new aluminum radiator, supposedly that will fit inside the grill shell to the chassis and then fit the grill shell over that in order to get the final fit form and function. Well, we discovered that in the course of doing that, that the radiator mounts were low, meaning that the radiator sat high and the grill shell sat high relative to the perspective to the frame. So we had a brief interruption and we ended up taking and sawing out the original mount of the frame as opposed to modifying the aluminum radiator. In so doing, that allowed to cut the old mount for the radiator off the frame. We lowered that floor right there by five-eighths of an inch, and that dropped the radiator by five-eighths of an inch that correspondingly dropped the grill shell by five-eighths of an inch and gave us a good fit on either side as it intersected the frame. Now one of the things I want to point out too is this little tool, after all the years I have worked on chassis and built cars, just recently started using this over probably the last two years. And that is a cutoff saw, air cutoff saw, that has actually a stainless steel blade in it, cutting blade in it, that really works great on steel and really works great on aluminum. So that said, we use that to cut this piece out of both sides of the frame, put a floor back in that was lower by 5 eighths, that lowered the radiator, which then lowered the grill shell to where we wanted it to intersect the frame. Now there's some disc sanding to do, minor, in order to just finish up, but it fits nicely on the center, fits nicely with a gap on either side, fits nicely with our rods that'll go to the firewall, and will fit nicely with the four two barrels that sit on top of the Arden motor. And that's what we just did. We went from taking it off the 32 and fitting it on the new perimeter frame for the high boy. Well, this past week we received our uh, winner's uh, V8 quick change rear end and uh, we have set it up in the frame platform at the ride height that we want the car to sit at. And uh, one of the things that we're making a modification to, not a major thing, is that most people run fairly short trailing arms. This is going to be a triangulated process where there's a uh, control arm here and the same over there and then uh, parallel control arms to the frame. And that, what that does is it locates the axle. You don't have to use a panhard rod. And, and that being said, I like to run long uh, trailing arms, both top and bottom, because it makes the ride softer. We're going to have a uh, coilover shock right here that attaches to the bottom of the axle. Same thing on the other side, of course. And that being said, that uh, once we tack all that into place and we'll take a hydraulic jack and rotate it and articulate it in such a way to make sure that we've got frame clearance, we've got wheel clearance, all those things that come into play that if it's not right, you get a tire rub or you get a metal to metal interference, it ends up uh, causing havoc later on. 
but uh, the little V8 rear end has uh, Winner's V8 rear end has uh, fabricated new bells. These are not genuine original oldies, but these are really cool because they uh, make this out of a stamping and they form this axle tube to be tapered similar to the original one. And it's just a sweet piece. It's very well made. We're putting uh, helical cut gears in the rear end on the spur gears. That cuts the noise by 80%. You still get the little bit of whine, which is old school and kind of traditional, but it isn't a whine that you know will drive you nuts and you want to pull over to the two, two miles down the road and get rid of the car. But uh, anyhow, that's where we are on the rear end. Next episode, we'll have the control arms all connected and uh, be able to articulate the rear and be pretty well along to being able to set it down and that's that's pretty much on the rear end what we have here is we're mocking it got the components in that uh, make up the uh, front end of the car the drop uh, i-beam axle the wishbones that are uh, cut and spread to be down the side of the car as opposed to go under it like a triangle uh, we've got our spindles, we've got some steering components, we've got our backing plates for our disc brakes. It's, it's a really cool cover that makes it look old school. And uh, we have set this up at the proper ride height in order to make sure the components do go together. Not only that, but they're not going to rub something. And uh, we will uh, uh, continue assembling the front end, putting the disc, we're using disc brakes, we'll put disc brakes on. Uh, we're using Willwood calipers, aluminum hubs, and then uh, in about two weeks we'll have our wheels that will go on and they're going to be old school uh, spokes that look very similar to a 35, 36 Ford wheel. This is uh, part of the process, laying these pieces in, being sure that they're going to be able to move up and down and not uh, uh, rub anything and uh, give us plenty of uh, uh, suspension clearance so that we have compliance to the road and uh, we're not too stiff. We want to be fairly soft.